So in this one, we are going to talk about the versions of Django as well as Python and how that's going to affect our project as well as yours. And then we're also going to create a virtual environment, install Django or the latest version of Django. And of course, this is called Try Django 1.9. So we're going to be working with Django version 1.9. Now, something that's very important to know when it comes to programming, especially with Django and Python and a lot of the programming languages and a lot of the frameworks, most of the time, the code that is current or the current version of the code is not going to be a whole lot different than the previous versions, right? So they don't make drastic changes with every new release. So right now, Django 1.9 is out, but Django 1.9 is not that much different than 1.8. There are some, some big advances and some big improvements, but for the most part, it's the same code, right? It's really not that much different. But when it comes to watching these videos, you definitely want to stick with the code that's in the video. And we usually talk about it at the very, very beginning when we do the installation process. We talk about what version it is, and you're definitely going to want to stick with that. So something about Django 1.9 versus 1.8 is how it's going to be released. And we'll talk about that in a second. But as we see here, we have the latest official version is Django 1.9. So if 1.9.1 was out, that is perfectly acceptable to use. You just want to make sure that it's 1.9 point something. For example, down over here, we see previous releases and that says Django 1.8.7. So at one time it was up here, it said 1.8.5 and 1.7 might've been out or excuse me, 1.8.7 might, might've been out and you could have used that. And then if for some reason, by this time you're using 1.10, which is the next release version, you could use 1.10, but it would be recommended that you use the latest version of 1.8. Now, what we do see is we have these unsupported previous releases, meaning they're not getting security updates or bug fixes. Now, security updates or bug fixes, that stuff is very important when it comes to bringing it in into production. That means that when you actually start putting it on a server and people work with it. But for learning purposes, using 1.6 or 1.5 even is not crazy. It's I mean, there are some things that are a lot different about it, but... If you don't know about Django and you're just trying to absorb as much as you can, and, and for some reason they're using 1.5, that's okay. There's going to be just slight differences. And I know this from working with it for years now and also working with a lot of students for years that we have worked with all these different versions. So the changes are, are definitely very minor. Uh, that being said, we do work hard to make sure that we update ours as well as with the Django project because those minor changes are still important. I'm not saying that they're not. Because once we go into the next version of Django or even Python, we want to stick with those as much as possible. So if you look at the supported version, they have these release schedules, right? And what we see here is Django 1.8 is a LTS release. That stands for long-term support. So the long-term support means that it's going to have support until April of 2018, where Django 1.9 is only going to have it until 2017. So in this case... 1.8 is still going to be relevant after a year after uh, Django 1.9, or at least a year after. Uh, it might even be longer than that, depending on how they do it. So these long-term releases are really those major releases. So 1.8 is really very still relevant, and it's something that you might still want to use. These other ones, as far as security is concerned and bugs, you're not going to want to use them in production. And then the next, next release schedule, here it is right here. We have 3.0 coming out in December of 2019. That's a ways away for us. Um, but 1.10 is coming out in August of 2016. That's going to be the next release. So that would be something that you might consider gearing up for, at least learning about. And whenever you go to this, this documentation here, or the download, you can see all this stuff. You can also see the release notes, right? So the release notes is showing you what the difference is between um, the Django versions or what's new in Django 1.9 versus 1.8. It's not going to be what's new in 1.9 versus 1.5. It's going to be with the last version, of course. Um, so that's, that's something about the Django versioning and something that's, that is important to know. I've had a lot of questions about this, so I just wanted to clear it up before we actually jumped in the project. Um, and then the next thing is using Python 2 versus Python 3. Now, Python 2.7 still comes shipped with all Apple Macs. So every single Mac, Mac still uses Python 2.7. So it's not like it's not used anymore. It's widely, widely used. And it's going to be widely used for a long time. 
Now, if you would rather use Python 3, that I'm gonna assume that you have an understanding of Python 3's syntax, but really the main differences here, which we'll talk about when we actually get to it, is just how it handles Unicode data and also print statements. So you can read through this, but the string and Unicode methods are things that we'll talk about once we get to those things being relevant. Um, it's in models.py if you're curious about that. But basically, um, those are the two major things that I've seen as an issue. Um, but this document right here is gonna talk about Python 3. All right, so that's a little bit about the version stuff. Now, let's actually get our project started. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and open up Terminal. So I'm using a Mac, of course. If you are on a Windows, it's gonna be very similar to this, just one step's a little different. I'm gonna make sure that my sudo, my pip installation is actually new. So pip easy install, I could do easy install or I could do sudo pip install pip and then dash dash upgrade. So this will actually upgrade my pip installation. Now, Windows users can do the exact same thing, just without sudo. So you would just do pip install pip. And now that I have pip installed, I can use that to go onto my desktop. And I'm gonna list everything out. So if I do pwd, this is showing me where my location is right now. So on the computer, right? So listing things out shows me these two folders. And if I actually drag these into the recording area, um, you would be able to see that I have a couple folders here. Uh, of course, on your desktop, it might be a little different. Now, I'm gonna save it on the desktop. You don't have to do that. I save it on the desktop to just make the location nice and easy for us while we develop. Um, but you could put it into a development folder if you'd like. But again, putting it on the desktop because it's not something we need to go through as far as creating a development folder and doing all that. All right, so I also have the philosophy that using a virtual environment inside for one project is the best way to go about doing it mainly because of version stuff. So going back to those version things. Now in this one, we wanna create a virtual environment here. So I'm gonna do pip install virtual env. So I'm gonna assume that you already have virtual env installed, but in some cases you wanna upgrade this. In my case, I don't need to upgrade it because it's already up to date. So I'll just do virtual env and I'm going to either name the folder I wanna put it into um, or I can create that folder and then make a virtual environment in it. And that's what I'll do is I'll do make dir and I'll call this try Django one nine. And I'm going to CD in a try Django one nine. And then we'll do virtual ENV and then dot. So virtual ENV dot means that it's going to make it inside of the folder that I'm in. I press enter and this will create that folder for me. And to activate it on Windows, or excuse me, on Mac, we'll do bin.activate. Um, for Windows users, it's just slightly different. bin.activate. For Windows users, it's dash scripts slash activate. Okay, so now we're in our virtual environment. And the reason we use virtual environments, which we've probably talked about before, but if we do pip freeze here, um, this shows us all of the Python packages that are installed. And if I did it on a normal, on my system, system-wide, it'll show me all these other Python packages, which is not something we need. So pip freeze will show us either wheel or nothing. So now that we're in this virtual environment, I'm gonna go ahead and do pip install Django equals equals to 1.9. And this will install the latest version of Django 1.9. Excuse me, it will install the version Django 1.9. We don't have point um, X or whatever. So if I actually did pip uninstall Django, I can remove Django from this virtual environment and I'll say yes. And then if I want the latest version of it, I could do pip install Django and this will get me whatever the latest version is. Or if I need to upgrade it, you do pip install Django dash dash upgrade. Upgrade. That, will, that can give you the latest version for Django specifically. Okay, so a lot of this should be review. So we're gonna go ahead and just create our Django project now. So Django um, dash admin dot py or dot py start project and we'll call it try Django 1.9. Press enter. If I list everything out, I see the virtual environment stuff and then also try Django 1.9. If I cd into try Django 1.9 and list everything out in here, I have manage.py and try Django 1.9. Now, of course, if you're on Windows, dir is how you list it out. Um, that's just gonna show you what's in the directory. For us, we just use ls if you're on Mac or Linux. Um, so 
we've got our project started. Let's go ahead and run the server. We'll do Python manage.py run server. And we have this error saying we have unapplied migrations. We'll talk about that shortly, but uh, we don't need to worry about that yet because we want to see if our page is actually working. So let's open up our browser again and let's paste in that URL. Congratulations, we've got our first Django Power page. Not a huge deal, but what it's doing right now is emulating a server. So it's emulating a web server. So a web server meaning it's emulating what a computer that would show a website would be doing, right? But this is called a development server. Obviously, if you went to this URL and your development server wasn't showing up, that URL would not work. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and then another thing here is it shows us the version and um, this URL we can actually change if we need to change the port. We could just do 8888 and this will actually change the port that it's gonna be working on. So it's the local host and then the port on that local host. Um, that stuff gets a little very techy, so you don't have to really worry about it other than the fact that this is where we will be using our development server when we test it locally. Notice that I refresh into the 8000 port and it's not working because we have the 8888 port working for us. So we go in there, it shows us that. Cool, so now that we've got our Django project started, um, we're really gonna start diving in and getting this thing going. Um, so in the next one, we'll actually jump into setting up a lot more things for Django. If you have any questions on the versioning stuff, let us know. Um, otherwise, let's keep going.